it's, it's brilliant because you've got this, you know, essentially a multi-pitch crag in an urban setting with a complete variety of climbing styles. So if you want steep cracks, you've got steep cracks. If you want bold technical slabs, you've got bold technical slabs. If you want rusty pegs and polished rock, you've, you've got that as well. But I don't know why you'd want that. <laughs> my teenage years and uh, didn't start climbing till I was about 17 and actually first ever rock climb I did was about 200 feet below where I'm sitting at this precise moment and I was kind of hooked for some reason I liked it <laughs> I liked climbing on polished limestone and that was it. So yeah, having climbed some of the routes here again, it's, it's made me realise just what a really good grounding you get in trad climbing here. And I suppose I took it for granted because it's just, that was what I did. Um, but climbing here again, it's made me realise, you know, that you've got to make sure you've got enough gear, you've got to make sure you've got lots of slings, because I definitely didn't take enough slings today because there's so many threads you could, you know, use on suspension bridge buttress. Just being quite canny with nut placements and stuff like that. And in the old days, I didn't own any friends, so it was all about placing good nuts. I think that was a brilliant grounding in becoming good at placing good gear. We went to suspension bridge buttress, which is the buttress directly below the bridge. There's just a whole host of lovely routes there. They're probably the best grade on that buttress is HVSE1. There's lots of starred routes. We've done suspension bridge arete there which is a really nice introduction. It, it doesn't get as much traffic even when I started climbing here it was it, the, the interest was waning and my peers had a bit of revival of Avon Gorge climbing. Younger generations subsequent to us haven't really taken the bat on, if you like. I think partly it's a lot to do with the fixed gear. There's a lot of fixed gear at Avon. Some of them are from the 60s and they're obviously rotten. There just isn't any gear sometimes. So what might have been a classic E1 could be really quite a dangerous E3 or E4. So you're not totally sure what you're going to get. But on the routes that are well-traveled and got good gear, uh, you, you can't beat it. It's really one of the most unique crags in the country. Where can you find properly adventurous routes within a city centre? You can't, so it's very special. And jam on limestone. And you can just pop out after work on an evening. It gets the sun in the evening. Very, very nice. Oh, good. It's got so many unexpected holes on it. Like weird pockets and it's much better than it looks. Yeah. Lots yeah. of starred routes here, lots of classics that were done in the 60s and 70s that the mind boggles what these guys were doing because it would have been scary times, I can tell you that much. I think the first time I set foot on the rock here was probably in 1988. So, what's that? I think that's 25 years ago. Oh dear. <laughs> am I really that old? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> 25 years ago was my first foray on top rope into climbing. And it took a few years to progress to the point where I felt like I wanted to pursue climbing as well, not as a career, but as a hobby, to be honest. Well, we've arrived and it was raining. I thought I'd come back and revisit a very, very old acquaintance called Jasper. Probably one of the most polished routes in the gorge. It's top roped 
endlessly by groups. Um, what grade is it again? I think it's HGS 5A. When I got introduced to climbing, I had no idea really what it was. And I remember coming to the gorge on my own because I desperately wanted to try and climb and sort of tentatively walked into the car park. I didn't know if I was allowed to be there. I was sort of looking around to find someone that maybe I needed to give some money to, you know, because I was so used to going to a sports centre and paying for the badminton course or the swimming pool. Once I discovered other climbers and met people, ah, oh, finally, I found a community of people that I fit into. But once the seed was sown, once the climbing wall had opened in 1992. That kind of really propelled things. I met lots of climbers, you know, we were all climbing, coming down here, climbing classic routes. Every weekend we'd go to Pembroke, and that's what I was doing. I was just trad climbing all the time, in between training down the wall as well. That was actually really good. Like in a weird, masochistic, polished, horrendous sort of way. Route. And I didn't fall off it. <laughs> it's that crack up there and it goes all the way up to a massive ring bolt that sticks out of the rock. And um, you can try and sling it, you know, lasso it with a sling. One of the routes I've done today is arms race on the upper wall, which is quite, it's not even that steep, but it felt really steep at the time, a steep crack. And I remember the first time I had a go at arms race, and it's, it's given E45C, so it's, it's very sustained climbing at 5C grade, but loads of good gear, if you could hang around and put it in. And the first time I ever tried that route, I was a good climber, but not particularly fit. And I think I got to the overlap, the initial overlap, which is barely 15 feet off the ground. <laughs> And I just made it to the overlap, completely pumped and slumped, you know, onto the gear that I'd managed to hastily throw in. Hung on every other piece of gear after that to the top. And then I went back on it maybe six months later and the difference was incredible. It, it felt like a different route. I, I just couldn't believe that I'd got so pumped on it. Someone actually tipped the crag back because it doesn't feel as steep as it did before. Uh, obviously, I just got loads fitter. It was really good going back on arms race and revisiting that route, especially because it holds a lot of memories for me from my formative years. And it was kind of a route that you wanted to prove yourself on. And, you know, if you did arms race, you know, you'd reached a certain level and there was a bit of respect for that. So I have definitely been plagued by injuries, some completely my own fault, having accidents, broken loads of bones, and some have just been tendons and soft tissue that just happens. I have had to be out for six months at a time because of an elbow problem or a knee problem, but you, you get over it, and I've always come back and felt stronger and got better, whereas this time, just after I climbed 8B+, plus, I realised I had quite a serious shoulder problem. It took three and a half years to actually diagnose what the problem was. So essentially for those few years, I wasn't really able to climb at my best. I couldn't push myself. And that was really frustrating for me, especially in, in your late thirties, you know, you know time's ticking and you haven't got long, long to go in terms of being at your physical peak and then having an injury that lasted that long was, was really frustrating. So I thought, right, I'm gonna to go to physios, I'm gonna to go to osteopaths. And so I did that. And actually one of the physios did say, right, we're not getting anywhere. I, I need to refer you to a doctor uh, to get a scan. And then I think climbing great buildings came along. Joining me as ever is the queen of British climbing, Lucy Creamer up not going to the doctor and not getting the scan and then after climbing great buildings I thought right I've tried all these other people I'm going to try a Chinese doctor he was brilliant and he really did help the pain and I really felt like we were making progress but at the end of this period of time I, I still thought no this isn't right there is something badly wrong in here 
And so eventually I got referred to have a, an MRI scan, which actually happened to um, be the day after I had the operation on my broken leg. So I was in the hospital anyway, so that was that all was quite um, convenient. So a year and a couple of months post-op and um, it, it's feeling okay. Yeah, I would say it's feeling like it was worth doing. If you've got a weird shoulder injury, get it checked out, go to the doctor. Don't do what I did and wait for three years and then go to the doctor. <laughs> well, my faith has been restored in Avon. It's turning into a really nice day. But the brilliant thing, and this is what I remember from my early days climbing here, is that we had torrential rain this morning, the crag was soaking wet, and literally within minutes it's drying out and there's roots to climb and I've just climbed, you know, a classic slippery HVS. If you do come in dodgy weather, it doesn't mean all is lost. You can still climb. <laughs>